G'day guys. Uh, I'm doing a bit of uh, checking, sorting, attempting to get a car going that's on the other side of the world. Now, I get a lot of emails, a lot of messages, can you give me a hand, can you give me a hand? And I try to help out with a few pointers and a few tips where I can. Um, but the reality of it is... I'm not always able to help everyone out and I've got to focus on my jobs that are paying my bills because I've got a lot of customers with cars here that I'm sorting out and getting right and a lot of looms that I'm working but every now and then I will see someone um, that hey I'll, I'll be helpful and, and this is a charge service I am on the clock right now and this particular one isn't the first time I've I've had to solve one of these problems there's a loom manufacturer in the world who um, basically will send out a loom and when it doesn't start they go too fucking bad we don't care and they will continue uh, on their merry way and leave a customer without a loom or without a running engine and it's not always the problem with the loom um so wait, we're just going to move this down get more head in here more, oh that was the wrong words wasn't it get more of my head in there Excuse me. Uh, so I helped Chris in the UK with his one, and this one happens to be Alan from the USA, and uh, he will know for next time to buy one of my looms, which are tested on my running engine, so I know that the loom is good, and that it is definitely a problem with the motor vehicle that it's fitted to. But I won't say that too much. Anyway, uh, so Alan's in Idaho. Uh, if I look at the time in Idaho right now, it turns out that it's around about, ooh, like it's uh, 7.45 here. It's like 1.45 in the morning. So I'm not communicating with Alan today. I'm not chatting with him. Uh, he's probably asleep. Now, he doesn't admit to be a computer expert. Um, actually, far from it. And he was totally honest with me about that. And that's really helpful. So, guys, when... I, I will pretty quickly pick up if you don't know what you're talking about, okay? Um, so, we had a communication back and forth. I've given some instructions to him. Um, I sent back some different trigger, figure, trigger numbers in a tune. Um, and the engine isn't starting up like it should okay it's got some modified cams in it um it's had some injector stuff done it's had things done normal, normal conversion type stuff and on the standard computer it didn't go like it should and it was glitchy which is normal on old looms so he got a new loom with the hope that it would just fire up work beautiful problem solved tuner get to the tuner tuner could set it up but it doesn't start properly, which is a small problem. Uh, so I have asked Alan to fire some engine starter. Vroom, vroom, it goes, but it has to keep some engine start in it to keep it going. I've then asked him to check his fuel flow. I want two litres per hour out of the return line. And if you are wanting to check your fuel flow, I've got a video on it. Search checking fuel flow on my video list. And um, actually, while I'm here for Alan, uh, search in my playlists for PC, ECU, oh, link ECU setup. Go ECU, link ECU setup. I flick this down, we might be able to, I might be able to find it, just wait. That one, link ECU set up into my playlists. And in there, there are some really helpful videos. Uh, I'm just going to get this out of the way. Uh, we're doing weird things here. One of them is going to be calibration of your map sensor, which we're going to talk about. And Doing an injector flow. Injector test. Injector test function. Alan, I want you to do one of them too. 
So watch that video. Do the thing you need to do. Right, we'll go back to the link software. Just wait there. I'm back. Right, on the link software. And Alan was wanting to know about his fuel pressure. I've asked him to check that his fuel pressure is doing what it should. And he sent me a log. And unfortunately, I didn't put fuel pressure in the log. However, he sent me a PC log. And PC log logs everything. Everything. So if I whip over to that one, we will find, um, which is uh, this one. I've got multiple things happening going on here, so it is kind of crazy. Um, you can see here, we go along, we're looking at the log. So I'm looking at that. This is not, not cranking, and that's clearly cranking. This is some runtime values in um, just in digital list and in, in not in a, a log, not in a squiggly line, just a parameter list. So I'm going to go over and oh, we're looking at we can look at battery voltage. We see right there the battery voltage is quite low. So uh, Alan, I want some more battery voltage. I want to see 12 volts, man. I want at least 12 volts. I don't want it going under 10 volts when you're cranking it. And the engine hasn't been running, I don't believe, and it's 32 degrees. Like, we're not even getting to 32 degrees on the hot of our days at the moment. We're getting to about 18s, and tonight it's going to be about 3 degrees Celsius. So in USA, Bald Eagle numbers, that's like 30. So we're probably going to be about 35 Fahrenheit, pretty much. But what I'm interested in, as we go along here, and it starts to crank, and we've got an injector duty cycle, so the, the computer is trying to fire the injectors. Air temp is correct. Map sensor, we'll kind of come back to that. Your map is weird. We're going to go right down here. Dwell, so that's your spark. Oil pressure isn't, there isn't an input for it. Fuel pressure, 300 kPa. And so that is where I would expect it when you're cranking it. It's the, the fuel flow was only one and a half liters per minute. It might come up with some more battery voltage because we're at low battery voltage. So um, we want to see another half a liter a minute um, of fuel flow, which may happen. So one and a half liters of fuel flow is enough to make the engine run okay may not run properly on the road it may lose power at the top end or may need very big injector numbers however for the purposes of what we're trying to do it's it's not worth going there and that is a we will look at that once it's right okay, it's not going to stop it from running alan was wondering where it comes up um, and he was only getting it as a voltage so little runtime values runtime values if we go to analog there it is there fuel pressure in volts however if we go into general we scroll down here we've got fuel pressure in kpa if you want it in different numbers um, you can change the units which is up in oh options preferences units there is there I prefer it in KPA myself um, because it makes all the other numbers correct and the map sensor correct the other thing you can look at and you know there's no oil pressure going in which I think I always put oil pressure into my ECUs as well um, you can come down here on the input pins on auxiliary or an analog sorry and there they are there so fuel pressures on a in volt three uh so but the one i'm looking at um oh and so we chuck some engine start in it and it will start and run then that means the timing is close enough i would like alan to check the 
base timing at some time point. But I'd also like him to calibrate his map sensor because there's some issues. Now the the BAP barometric at, at, atmosphere pressure sensor is at 92 kPa. So either you're in a storm or you are really high up in the mountains, a long way above sea level. But <sighs> When you calibrate your map sensor, it's going to come. It should come in and read the same or very close to the BAP sensor. So, when we're looking at that log, get rid of the run times. If we come up into here, we've we've got no map. The engine's not creating any vacuum, and that is a problem. Okay, so we better go right back to the basics and. I would like to see the map sensor calibrated and the um, TBS calibrated. Now, I don't even know what map sensor is in it. So if I go to map sensor here under analog inputs, <coughs> hello, here's the problem. There isn't one. They might do it, eh? So we're going to need to add a map sensor. Now, Alan did send me a list of where things go. Okay, I'm just... Yes, I do want to leave that view. Configuration. Now, I got Alan to increase the master fuel so this is the earlier map it's now at 30 30 it is it is massive 30 is a massive fuel number so i knew it, it's something to do with injection of fuel it runs when he gives it some engine start okay so that means that's that's a positive step forward and i can see that he probably didn't calibrate his map sensor because it's could have failed because it doesn't have one. Um, load equation, load source is map. So there's no map sensor set up. I'm going to just go back and check an email and we'll, I'm just going to review that as part of my sorting this job out and go over it. And um, I'll be right back to you in just a moment. That was fast, eh? It was like it was instant for you guys. But I had to find the email. Uh, here we go, look. G4X Adam, K20 coil on plug. Aftermarket cams, ARP head studs, rebuild injectors. New cam sensor, 2 wide idle speed. 150 PSI fuel pressure sensor. Fuel pump. IAT, no lambda. And no lambdas making it really hard would make it really hard for me to set up because um, I could see what the lambda readings are sometimes it's not the best for startup issues um, it's more once it's actually going vroom vroom gives a brief vroom vroom and then it stalls good yep and then it doesn't fire at all oh he did calibrate the TBS good didn't doesn't mention calibrating the map sensor uh, injectors click yes good when tested oh you might have done that Calls click when tested, that's good. Calling fan clicks in. ECT's reading collected. IAT's reading cor correctly. Yep, good. Uh, RPM looks correct. Mm, it actually cranks over really fast. Uh, 244 on the cranking speed. That is very fast. I would normally expect about 200. Okay, so 244 isn't too much. 3 to 400 is probably too much. Uh, fuel pressure is reading in volts, can't, doesn't know how to display it in PSI. So we, we've had a look at where that fuel pump primes, which is good. Plugs remain dry, no fuel smell, which fuel problem, and plugs remain dry. Timing offset, zero to reference here. So uh, a bit stumped, no pops or backfires. I think it's super close to running. 
and yes, how do we send me money? Yep, all that stuff. Okay, so good. And hey, it's a nice looking loop. And um, the, the setup looks really good. Let me just see, find find some pictures here. Just again, you you're gonna wait there. It'll be like instant. It's like magic. I'll just push this pause button. Okay, here we go. Um, fault finding skills are well honed. Good. Thirty years of hot running, and that's pretty good. Um, Ten hours spent on standalone tuning, and I've never used a link before. And being really honest with me really helps because it allows me to sort these things real fast. Okay, much easier. Okay, let's have a look. There's a picture of the loom. Here's a picture of the engine. Look at that nice, neat, and tidy. Looking lovely. So, I don't actually know what the. Oh, it's in a Hilux. Oh, no. You guys don't call it Hilux. It's a pickup. Okay. I'm at this point going to have a chat with Alan with regard to where that map sensor is. Um, I need to go back to my link tuning software. This one. I need to go there. We're not getting any map. There's no map input. I just want to look at the fuel table. Oh, I shouldn't look at it there, eh? I should look at it in, in this one. <coughs> so looking at this table, it's still got the numbers for being boosted. I'm going to leave it like that at this point in time. We're going to, we've got, I've got other numbers, I've got other units, but that again, that isn't the problem at this point in time. I could take all this out and tidy it all up, but that comes into where the tuning. We're focusing on making it go vroom vroom and stay going vroom vroom. So, um, Alan will be waking up in the morning and be watching this. And I thought, hey, I'll just come in and I'll do a quick little video and say, can you check the calibrate the TPS and calibrate the map sensor. He's calibrated the TPS, but ta -ta -da. so I'm not even sure what map sensor is on there. Um, he will report back in the morning. And uh, I've got a bit of an idea where to move forward now. Hopefully setting up a map sensor, turning it on. Shall we show how to turn it on? Uh, you can lick it or you can rub it. Um, that's the wrong map. We can go down here and we go to analog inputs. Analog inputs. There we go. Map sensor. Now I'm thinking the only place it can be is on analog volt 2, so it's probably going to be on analog volt 2. I was looking at the pinouts. Wait. It's it's been a big day. Let's find the pinouts. Right. right. So Alan was actually extraordinarily good and sent me all the paperwork that he had and some of the paperwork that he'd uh, written up and generated himself in the photos, which is really helpful. I've just looked over that documentation. I'm not going to show you because. Um, it does identify who made the loom. And there is some wiring that is marked as spear or map sensor on analog volt 2. Uh, choices for map sensor. I use a link 1.15 bar. Alan being in the USA, he's probably going to use like a GM 1 bar or 3 bar sensor. <laughs> I don't like them. I don't like the plugs. But they're also very easy to get. So if in the USA, they're probably not a bad choice. And Link's got a calibration table. Um, but, but there are a lot of map sensors that can be used for that purpose. So, Alan, when you wake up, you're going to watch this. You're going to have 20 minutes of this. Uh, you're going to see it before everyone else. If I've said anything I shouldn't have said, you, it doesn't have to go public. But if the public are watching it, Alan said it's okay. Hope that's been helpful. We're going to get this thing going. Talk to you again soon.
Keď sa